Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Envy, not the sin, nope, we are talking about a new open source 2D animation software uh, released kind of the end of last year, it's been in development rapidly since then, and I gotta tell you right up front, this guy is pretty impressive. And there's a thing about open source, I don't know why, it's E-N-V-E, open source projects love their recursive acronyms, and that's what this is. NV stands for NV is not a video editor. What it is, is an animation tool for 2D animations, and if you've worked with any 2D animation tools in the past, you're going to be immediately at home here, which is nice because there's not a ton of documentation, so the more intuitive, the better. Uh, you can see here, we are at the the website. It is available at, yeah, there, uh, Marcy Kleibner, uh, github.io. I will, of course, link that down below. Uh, it's available for Linux and Windows. Uh, binaries are available. You might be encouraged by this documentation thing. And by the way, the fact that these aren't centered is really driving me nuts. Please center that. Uh, anyways, documentation, there's not a lot there. But the cool thing here is there is a description of shader effects. These are GL shaders that you can actually run on your animation. It's really cool stuff. You can do your own raster effects as a result. NV is open source. It is under the GPL v3 license. It is up on GitHub. I will link that in the linked article as well. But what you're probably wondering is what NV is all about. And let's go find out. So here we are in NV. Uh, right off the hop, you can create a new scene or you can open one. Let's go ahead and create something new. Um, here you can say how many frames of animation. 200 is way too many. So I'm just going with 20 for this example. And OK, and we are done. And it's pretty bare bones to start with. The nice thing is the user interface, and this is something that drives me nuts, especially in the world of graphics, where a lot of times you're using like a 4K resolution monitor. Um, this guy, you can actually come in and do input scaling, and it does a very polished job of it. So I'm going to scale up by 14%. And you see, you got a little bit more to work with. Actually, for the tutorial, here, let's scale this up so you can see a little bit better. And good. All right, so here we go. This is the main surface for Envy. And here you can see where things work. We've got uh, no objects selected. We've got no files open as of yet. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll open up an image. So we're going to go ahead and import a file. You can also import a sequence of files. This one's on my desktop because it's either in desktop or temp in my world. And I want to grab Marine. All right, there we go. So we now have a transparent space marine that we can do stuff with. Um, we can move him around, we can do that kind of stuff, but let's say we want to do a simple animation. We want this guy to go from, say, here to here. You'll notice here we have our timelines, pretty traditional in the way the animation stuff works. Also, interestingly enough, uh, it uses Google, uh, sorry, not Google, um, Blender hotkey. So like G to grab, S to scale, like so, and then R to rotate like so. So if you're used to the whole um, uh, <laughs> blender way of doing things, you're going to be right at home here. Now the weird, it does weird selections or whatever. I'm fine with it being off kilter there. All right. So we want this guy and we want him to walk across the scene. You're going to notice down here we have Marine PNG. So let's open that up. By the way, we could have easily renamed that if we so wished. Um, so let's call this guy Space Marine. Space Marine. All right. There we go. Uh, so now we're going to move this guy from here to there for the emperor. So you got here, we got the transforms and we can do each individual transform, position, rotation, scale, and so on. But I was gonna go ahead, set a key. So there we are. We'll move forward to frame five. We'll set a key there. We're gonna do a little bounce as we go. And then 10, and we're gonna bounce up a bit. And then 15, and you notice we're basically doing auto keying. And then in 20, he is going to join the emperor. All right, there we go. So we just created a timeline. I will admit, this is an area where I really struggle with. I don't know how to control like the looping of time. Uh, so let me see if I got it right. There we go. So there is our animation. Woo. And that is pretty much how hard it is to create stuff. Now we're only looking at the very basics here right now, but that is how you would bring in an asset um, and work with it. Now, say if we wanted to here, uh, we could go through and let's say midpoint, we're going to make this guy disappear. And then here, so you notice it automatically set an appearance key, and let's bring him back. And then he's gonna go off screen. What it is he's going off screen, he's going to become corporal again. So here we go, and now corporeal. Sorry, I made a new word up. Uh, so here, let me figure out how to get back in the timeline. Press stop, back in the timeline, and go. There we go, so we get invisibility. So that's how easy it is to get um, it's other things like opacity working and so on. And we've even got some pixel effects we can work with here. So raster effect we can drop in here. And this is what you can go ahead and create your own using GLSL kind of equivalent, the documentation. That is like the one thing that is documented. So if you want to look into how to create your own raster effects, you can. So we can apply a blur to this guy like you see right there. And we can apply a motion blur as he moves. And you can notice the raster effects show up down here. 
and we can configure them as we go. So blur radius or the opacity of the blur and the speed of the blur and so on can all be controlled down there. Again, you just set the keys for it and set the key over time and you're good to go. We can also move from keys to graph mode over here. I don't get it to work though, so I don't know if it's me or it, uh, but there you go. We saw one of the ways that you can animate in this guy. Um, another cool thing we can do is draw. We can draw in a couple of modes. The first one that's actually really kind of cool is I can go into a painting mode here, and you'll notice down here, this little guy right here. Well, if you're a regular this channel, I covered something called My Paint a while ago, and it's a set of brushes that are, it's a standalone painting application, but it's also a brush engine, natural media painting style brushes that can be embedded in other applications, such as Envy. So that's what we've got here. We've got a number of different brushes from a number of different categories here. Uh, so let's say we want to do DNA brush that'll make DNA strands and we can basically just paint. And so we got a ton of different paint effects here. Uh, you can do them on a frame by frame basis. We've even got tools down here for doing onion skinning to see how things change between frames. So that is the tool that's there. So you can directly paint with natural media brushes directly inside of this guy uh, and you can move them around also. So let's say if I wanted to take uh, my freshly created painting job here. Uh, let me see if it's down here. So there's my paint that I just did there. And what I could do now is again, transform it, or I can do effects on its canvas over time. So if I wanted to have this guy fade in, fade out, move around, we can animate it just like we did the image that we brought in. So you can draw and paint directly inside of Envy. On top of that, we've also got some vector graphic stuff. So let me grab this guy, we'll go to select tool, we'll move this guy over here out of the way, and we'll do one more demonstration before I wind things up and show you how to just go ahead and render things. So we've got here, we've got um, vector tools. So we've got paths that we can add in or points. So I'll do a, an add a path and let's just, we can do it like that and we close it. Actually, I don't know if that's gonna close or, and I'm gonna undo that and undo the whole thing. But what I could do, is, uh, I didn't mean to undo you though. Oh, I'm still in path mode. Damn you. All right, so I'll grab this guy, move him out of the way, and instead we're going to use the paintbrush, and I'm just going to draw a circle. All right, there we go. And over here you've got your effects, so we can control how the stroke is shown. So we want to make the gauge a little wider on our stroke. There you go. And obviously set the color. We've got different uh, color parameters we can work with. We've got a color picker going on. And we can also set the fill effect. So if we want to do a gradient, we can do a gradient. So let's make this a big red ball. And now we can animate this guy over time. So let's go ahead, we'll rename this guy. Uh, we've also got path effects we can apply to it. Uh, don't know how, okay, come back to that later on. Uh, and you see you've got various different options available here. So path effects, all right, so you got things here like solidify, line, zigzag, subdivide, and so on. And we've got special effects for fills as well and for the outline. Uh, but what I want to do here, so once again, I'm gonna come back here, rename this guy and call this ball. All right, there we go. So we got our ball. Uh, we're gonna, again, open it up, transform, sure. We can also animate the fill and the outline property. So if we wanna change the thickness and the color over time, those are all animatable as well. But I'll just do a straight up frame by frame animation. So frame zero, uh, position, sure. So I'm gonna jump forward to, oh, so I set the key. Uh, here, I'll do a whole transform key. All right, so there we go. Very wasteful, but I like wasting. All right, so there we go. We're seeing our animation, oops. We gotta move back to select mode. Uh, let's move this guy down here, frame 10, and then we'll hit here. And I guess we should probably do some scaling. So let's scale that guy down, move it to the bottom. And then here, we'll move it back up a bit. Let's scale that guy back out a little bit. And then here, we'll move this guy really high up. I don't know, well, there we go. So now we have a bounce animation going on. So let's go back to the beginning. By the way, you can scrub up here if you so wish but there is our balance. Pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the heart of what N NV does. And on top of that, surprisingly enough, there is text mode that actually works fairly well. So it works fairly well. All right, go ahead. And of course this is animatable as well. Let's grab that, move that over here. Oop, come on. There we go. So it's controllable, various different fonts available. So you wanna change it out. There are all kinds of fonts you can work with. You've got your alignment thing. So if you wanna write a line, you can write a line. And of course you can animate the text as much as you wish. And there's the things you can do. You can even change the text over time if you so wish. So it's 
it's a really capable animation tool. And we've seen most of what's there. Um, again, there's not a lot of help going on. The ability to write your own shaders seems pretty cool. Uh, you can write uh, extensions in C++. It's built on two levels. So you've kind of got a back end and then the front end UI that works on top of it. So uh, I imagine parts of it are reusable. It's nice to see them integrating with another uh, open source toolkit in this whole my, my paint brush integration. That's, that's pretty powerful. And that's kind of nice that they're all there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's about it. So when you're done, when you finally got the animation that you, you your masterwork, your your life's plan, my space marine bouncing a ball with the static on the side, I just spent my life working on this. I'm ready to share it with other people. What do I do? Well, you render it. So your render settings are down here. You'll notice we have no render as of yet. What we need to do is add this to our render. And I forget how. I'll be right back. Oh, I remembered how. Scene. Add to render queue. So again, you can also have multiple scenes, by the way. So we've got our single scene right here. I can add a new one. Like so. I'll go back to scene zero though. So we've got it. Our scene is added to our render. We expand that out. We've got our render settings. So we've got frame zero to 20, 100% at uh, 1080p resolution, 24 frames per second. We can, of course, tweak any of that if we so wish. Um, but what I'm going to do is drill this open. So we've got output settings. We can configure right here. Uh, right now, it's going to do an image sequence, which I do not want. I want it to make a movie instead. So there we go. There's our movie. There's all the kind of um, encoding formats, options you have available. And you're going to notice you've got a lot of options here. But again, I'm pretty happy with MPEG-4. You can configure which actual codec to use with it. I'm fine with uh, H.264. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're good. I'm ready for my animation. Configured there. All the things I got to left do is pick where to put it. And of course, this is me. That means it goes in C colon slash temp. C colon slash temp. And then we'll call this Space Marine Ball Movie. Yeah, that works. I go ahead and when you are done, render. So now what it's doing is basically rendering. And now uh, we're done. So now it has generated our uh, masterpiece here. If I go over to my temp folder, which is probably over full with crap. Yeah. And where's Space Marine? Space Marine. There we go. So here is our movie. Oh, masterpiece. I, I do have to say, let's put that on loop so we can all appreciate it. I don't remember how. All right. I'll just play it over and over and over again for you. By the way, that dimming is, um, that's actually the media player, not, not the video we just made. But as you can see, we've got a nice little animation going on. We've got fading. We've got a uh, dynamically drawn object. We've got vector objects in here. Uh, it's, it's powerful. I'm actually kind of shocked with how well everything works here, especially for something that is pretty early on. So if you're interested in learning more, once again, I will have all of the things down below. Uh, there is a little bit more technical detail up on the, um, the GitHub site about how you can build it yourself. If you look at the build instructions for Linux, this is where C++ projects get fun because you got to build all of the dependencies to go with it and uh, Qt, which is the underlying UI framework I believe it uses. And uh, yeah. There you go. Or what you can do is go ahead and just head on over here, go to the download links, and you can find binaries for Linux and Windows. So that is Envy, an open source 2D animation software. And I have to say, really good job, guys. It, it I don't know. It, other than a few UI twerks here and there, it's um, it's pretty polished. So let me know what you think of this in general. I know there's a couple of um, you know animation tools out there. I've covered a couple on the channel, and then there's like the big ones like Open Tunes. But this is a nice little middle ground. It's not that complicated, and it's it's pretty powerful. And then once again, there is that shader extension language there option here. So if you wanted to create your own shader effects for your own raster effects, you can do so. And again there are some instructions on how you go about doing it. So uh, yeah, that is Envy, an open source animation app. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all later and goodbye.